Okay, welcome back. Um, 10.6 radical equations. Um, right, so we want to use, um, or we want to solve, geez, my stupid thing's all off again. We want to solve equations that have radicals in them. Um, and the way we'll do it is by raising both sides of the equation to some power to eliminate the roots. Um, just one tidbit of information. We should recall that uh, the square root of something squared, presuming that x can be negative, is always the absolute value of x. Okay. This is kind of a different scenario than what we are presented with in this section. Um, now, it, it's more like uh, the square root of x squared is equal to something. So see how it's a subtle thing, but uh, it's an order thing. Okay, So on the inside, you have the squared and then square root. Here, on the insides, it's the square root, and then you, on the outside, you have the square. Um, when this order happens, you don't have to worry about the absolute value because you'd never be able to put a negative inside of here in the first place because square roots won't allow anything less than or equal to zero. Anything less, just strictly less than zero, excuse me, you could take the square root of zero. But in this scenario that we have now, um, the square and the square root will just naturally cancel each other out. They're kind of like natural enemies or something. I don't know how you want to think of it, but um, that's going to be the, the plan. So if you're given a square root, you can square it, and then that'll get rid of all of the square root symbol and all that junk, and you're just left with the inner part. Okay? Okay. Um, there's one small issue that can come here, and that's uh, extraneous solutions. So when you do solve these guys, you're going to have to worry about um, introducing, you know, false solutions. So we will have to always check our answers when dealing with these kinds of equations. Okay. So in this setting, you're always going to have to check your answers. There's just no way around it. Okay. It's very sad. Um, so anyways, let's jump, jump in here and take a look. This is number two. We have the square root of 5x minus 1 equals 8. Okay. So what do you do? You want to square both sides. Okay, so over here and over here. On this side, uh, the square root and the square will sort of cancel each other out, and you're just left with this part of it. Okay. So you'll just be left with the 5x minus 1. And on the right-hand side, you'll have 8 squared which is 64. Now that you've gotten rid of the square root, it just goes back to being an old-fashioned um, linear equation. Um, we can solve this by isolating the variable term, so add 1 to both sides, and then finally isolate the variable by dividing both sides by 5. And, you know, what do we have? It looks like 1, 3, 13. Okay, um, then finally, you, in this case, sadly, you always have to check your answers. It's very sad. Um, so what I do now is say, hey, I'm going to do a check. Is x equal to 13? Or write check and you know, put a title here or some sort. You have to go back to the original equation. I sort of lost that, but it was square root of 5x minus 1 equals 8, and then replace x with uh, 13. And I have to see this check. You can't just say, ooh, I did it in my head. I need some sort of written documentation that you're doing the check. Okay. All right. So here's 13 times 5 is 15, 65. So square root of 65 minus 1. And you're, you know, you're not moving things. This is not solving. Okay, you're just making sure that this side equals this side. Um, simplifying, now I have 64. And then the square root of 64 is just 8. So if you have a true statement ending up at the end, that means it is a solution. So 8 is 8. That means this guy is our answer. Okay.
Okay, so let's keep on looking at them. And there's a bunch of variations on this theme of uh, solving. So we'll see some weird sort of scenarios happening. And then we want to look at, um, you know, just general nth root equations. Um, and how do we deal with those as well? So, okay, here's number six. You know, the square root of 2x plus 5 plus 11 equals 6. Okay, we could square both sides here, but we'd end up having to do some foiling, and that's just a headache. So, uh, standard rule of thumb is to isolate the radical when possible. Sometimes you have multiple radicals flying about, so it's not possible, but if possible, then isolate. So you're going to move the 11 to the other side. And now I can square both sides. So on the left-hand side, the square and the square root will go away, just giving you a 2x plus 5. On the right-hand side, that'll be negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. I'll move the 5 over. So minus 5 on both sides. And finally, divide by 2. And you're not out of the woods yet. You still have to check your answer. Okay, so wherever I see x, I'm replacing it with a 10. So I have 2 times 10 plus 5 plus 11. And on the other side, there's a 6. I simplify the guts here, so it would be square root of 20 plus 5. And then the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. And then we have 16 on the left-hand side and 6 on the right. This is not a true statement. Okay, so in those cases, you will not accept that particular solution. And in this case, there's only one possibility. Uh, so we don't have any solutions. Okay, so in this case, no solutions. OK, um, let's look at 12. This time I have x equals square root of 3x minus, no, 3x plus 7 and minus 3. Okay. I want to, again, I want to try, if possible, to isolate the radical. There's one radical, so I'll move the 3 over, plus 3, plus 3. So you have x plus 3 equals the square root of 3x plus 7. Then you'll square both sides. Um, over here, you have to FOIL that. x plus 3 squared is the same as x plus 3 times x plus 3. Okay, so the first is x squared. The outer is 3x. The inner is 3x, so plus 6x. And then the last, plus 9. On the right-hand side, the square and the square root cancel. So I just have 3x plus 7. So we're ending up with a quadratic form of an equation, and I need to set that equal to 0. So I'll subtract 3x on both sides. That will give me 6x minus 3x is 3x. Subtract 7 on both sides. 9 minus 7 is 2. And then I hope I can factor. If not, you have to use a, well, maybe we haven't talked about the quadratic formula yet, but sometimes you have to use other tools. Uh, it looks like this case will be easy, plus, plus. Um, the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. Uh, then zero factor property, so you set each factor equal to 0. And we have two potential solutions. We still need to check. And so now I'll check. And I'll do negative 2 first. 
So you place this into the original. You can't do any shortcuts, okay? You can't put it into here. You have to go into the original. So I'll have negative 2 equals the square root of 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 7 minus 3. So I'll have negative 2 equals square root of 1 minus 3. And then negative 2 equals square root of 1 is 1. And negative 2, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. That's a true statement. So that will give us, that is one solution. Okay, so negative 2 works. I need to check negative 1. So into the original equation it goes. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Plus 7, and then minus 3. So minus 1 is square root of 4 minus 3. And then I have negative 1 equals 2 minus 3. And it looks like that one works as well. Okay. So yeah, we have uh, this time I'll go back, you know, generally what I do is if it is a solution, I'll circle it. If it's not, I'll cross it out just so it's obvious to whoever's reading it um, whether it's a solution or not. Okay, um, if you have other power roots, you just raise it to the power of the root. So if you have a root that is a third power, so for example, number 18, So it's a, a cube root, and uh, how do I solve this? Well, you just raise each side to the third power. So if this was a, five, a fifth root, you'd raise each side to the fifth power. Sixth root, raise each side to the sixth power, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, let's do the third uh, power. So you'll end up with 6x minus 3 over here. And then on this side, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. Add the 3 to both sides. And then solve. So x is 5. Now, if you're raising both sides to an odd power, you don't have to worry about checking. Okay, That's not necessary then. So if raising both sides to an odd power. So before we were raising it to the second power, which was even, so we had the check. But if you're raising both sides to an odd power, you don't have to do that. A check is not necessary in those cases. Okay. So it's a little easier in that case, and you just circle your answer. There it is. Okay. Um, let's, do I have any other fifth part? Fourth part? Let's, oh, here's one. So problem 30. I have 2x plus 3, um, the fourth root of it. But we can also write that as 1 fourth. So um, 2x plus 3, and then we have the fourth power the fourth root, excuse me. So that's a four there. Um, plus seven is 10. All right, so I wanna isolate this fourth root. And when you see it in the book, they'll probably write it with uh, exponent instead. So remember, if you have a fourth root, you can rewrite that as one fourth. I'm gonna move the seven to the other side, so that's three. So now, in, uh, instead of raising both sides to the second power, you raise it to the fourth power. And we're using an even power, so we're going to have to check our answer. And so I'm raising both sides this time to the fourth power. And then move the three over, so I'm solving. The 
Bible sides by two. And I think that's 36. Or is it 39? Sorry, 39. Okay, and again, it's uh, even root, so I have to check my answer. And so I have the fourth root of 2 times 39, which of course is 78. Seventy-eight, seventy-nine, eighty, eighty-one. So the fourth root of eighty-one. And then uh, that's just three. Three plus seven is ten. So ten equals ten, and so that's a solution. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go back now to just working with uh, square root equations. So uh, we'll look at now sort of some other variations on the theme, which may not be as obvious as to how to approach them. So in this case, we'll have uh, several roots. So I have x square root of x minus 8 equals square root of x minus 2. Okay, so the problem with this one is isolating the radical. Right? There's two radicals, so how do I isolate it? Well, you, you don't, okay? That is just to be, um, to be honest with you, you're not going to. You're not going to be able to do it. So what do you have to do? You, have, you square both sides as is, and uh, you kind of will have to square it again. On the left-hand side, you have now x minus 8. But on the right-hand side, you'll have to FOIL that out. Okay? So um, you know, x square root of x minus 2 squared is the same as square root of x minus 2 times square root of x minus 2, if we were to expand that. Okay? So then you have to FOIL. Square root x times square root x is, of course, square root x squared, which will just be x. And then outer minus 2 x square root x, inner minus 2 square root x, and then last plus 4. So I have x minus 8 equals square root of x squared is x, then I have minus 4 square root x, and then plus 4. And now what you're going to want to do is to isolate this radical term and then square both sides again, believe it or not. Um, so I'm going to move this x over to here. When I do that, the x's will go away. So it would be x minus x is just 0, leaving with negative 8. And then I can move the 4 over, so minus 12 now. And now I want to isolate the square root x. So I divide both sides by negative 4. Over here I have 3. On the right-hand side, square root x. And now square again to get rid of that root. Okay, so you end up with uh, over here x and over here 9. So let me flip-flop sides and you just have x is 9. Okay, so we squared, we ended up having to square both sides multiple times, right? We started here, squared it, and then got to here and had to square it again. So we definitely need to check. Um, so check for x is 9. I have to go way back to the original equation, and we're obviously x put in 9. So I have the square root of 9 minus 8 equals the square root of 9 minus 2. The square root of 9 minus 8 is the same as the square root of 1. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 1 is 1. And then 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 equals 1. That's true. Okay. So this will be our solution. Okay. Okay. Let's look at 26. Q 
to square root of x minus 3 plus 4 equals x plus 1. I want to isolate the radical, okay? or at least try to. There's only one radical here, so that should be possible. Okay, so first I'm going to move the 4. Um, and then you could divide by 2. I, I don't think it's going to matter, though. Let's just keep the 2 over there, because otherwise we're going to have to deal with fractions. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides or square both sides now. So remember, if you have a product to a power, so a, b, and then maybe you wanted to raise that to the third power, in order to do that, you just literally raise the individual factors to the third power. So this would be a cubed, b cubed. So in that regards, you want to do the same thing here. You want to raise the 2 to the second power, which would give you 4, and then raise the square root of x minus 3 to the second power, in which case the square root will get annihilated. And you'll have to 4 times x minus 3. On the right-hand side, we have to FOIL this. Okay, so we'll have x squared minus 6x plus 9. Over here, we'll distribute. Um, we got a, it's quadratic, so set it equal to 0. So I'll have x squared, move the 4x over, so minus 10x, add 12 to both sides, so plus 31 equals 0, or 21, sorry. And then factor it. So the sign, it has to be x and x, and the signs have to be minus minus. And then two numbers that multiply the 21, but add to be 10. So that would be 7 and 3. Okay, and then set those equal to 0, and we should have our solutions. We still need to check it, though, right? So I have to go back here. We'll check x is 7 first. And I'm placing it into the original equation. Okay. So I have 2 times 7 minus 3 is 4. So on the other side, I have 8. And I have uh, radical 4 is 2. Two times two is four, plus four is eight. Four plus four is eight. On the other side I have eight, so that is a workable solution. Move on to the other solution, three. Again, you're putting that back into the original equation. Wherever you see a x, you put 3. Okay, so I'll have 2 times the square root of 3 minus 3 plus 4 equals 3 plus 1. Three minus 3 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Two times zero, of course, is zero. Zero plus four is four. Again, that's a true statement, so that one also works as a solution. And so we have two solutions for our answer. Okay, let's look at one more, and this is a harder one. So it should be more interesting. square root of x plus 2 plus the square root of 3x plus 7 equals 1. Okay, um, you could square both sides at this point, but you'll have some foiling to do. Um, this is going to be one of those ones where you have to square it twice. It's almost like if you see 
two square roots, you're end up ending up having to square it twice. If you see three square roots, you've got to square it three times, etc. I think. Um, I don't think you'll ever see more than two in our work. Okay, so what am I going to do? Um, probably just move one of the radicals to the other side, so I have I don't have to worry about it too much. Um, so I'll move the the uh, let me move this one to the other side, okay? So I'll have square root of x plus 2 equals 1 minus the square root of 3x plus 7. And then I'm going to square both sides. On the left-hand side, that'll just be x plus 2. On the right-hand side, let's expand it to 1 minus square root of 3x plus 7 times 1 minus square root of 3x plus 7. Okay, so I have x plus 2. On the right-hand side, I have 1 times 1, the first. Then the outer would be minus square root of 3x plus 7. Then the inner would be a ne negative square root of 3x plus 7. And then the last will have negative times negative positive, And there will be 3x plus 7 times 3x plus 7. Simplify a little bit. These are actually like terms, right? So there's negative one here and another negative one here. That would give you two of them. Negative two square root three x plus sevens. And then look at this last guy. It's uh, just as if you had something like radical x times radical x, or maybe even easier, radical three times radical three. Now, what happens in that case? Well, the square root symbol would go away. Um, you can think of it as square root 9, which would just be 3, or you can think of it as square root 3 squared. If you square it, if you square a square root, the square root would go away, so you just have 3. So in this case, when you go this times this, the square roots would go away, and you're just left with plus 3x plus 7. So now what? Well, again, we want to isolate the radical term and then square again. So I'm going to move, um, I think I'm going to move this over and then this over here. And I'll avoid negatives. So adding that to that side, you'll have 2 radical 3x plus 7. And then I'm adding this stuff over here. Right? So I'll have, uh, maybe I should have simplified a little bit before, right? So this is 7 plus 1, and then I'm moving the 2 over, so that would be minus 2. 7 plus 1 is 8, minus 2 is 6. And then I have uh, move the x, so plus 2x. I, I really want to isolate the radical, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. And you get radical 3x plus 7 equals 3 plus x. And then I'm going to square both sides. And now finally, the root will go away over here. And on the right-hand side, I have the foil. So I'll have 9 plus 3x plus 3x is 6x, and then plus an x squared. It's now quadratic, so you want to set it equal to 0. Right, so I'm going to move this stuff over and flip-flop at the same time. So you have the x squared, and then if you move the 3x over, 6x minus 3x is plus 3x. And then minus and 7 over here will give you plus 2. And then hopefully you can factor that, so I think we can. We'll have x and x, and then plus plus, and then 2 and 1.
set each equal to zero. And solve. Okay, a lot of work, still not done. Got to go ahead and check our solutions now. So let's start with negative two. We want to put it into the original equation. So I'll have square root of negative two plus two plus square root of negative two times three is negative six plus seven. The other side I have a one. Negative two plus two is zero, and then the square root of zero is zero, so that will go away. And then square root of negative six plus seven square root of one. Square root of one is one. That's true, so that's a working solution. Now we go and check negative one. So in that case, putting it back into the original equation, I have square root of negative one plus two plus the square root of negative one times three is negative three, and then plus seven. Negative one plus two is one. So square root of 1 plus negative 3 plus 7 is square root 4. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. And then finally, 1 plus 2 is 3, which is not equal to 1. So that's a false solution, so negative 1 won't work. Okay, so negative 1 will not work, but negative 2 did. So we'll circle the 1 and cross out the other. And that would be all there is for 10.6. Thank you for watching. See you next time.